motocross and had an uh, injury that you just became familiar with, but pretty gnarly. And so he's going to obviously take it easy today. And uh, we're going to have you do some, some trigger point therapy, uh, kind of um, myofascial release stuff with him. The dude claims, uh, you know, on his own that he's basically welded together. He's, his biggest weakness is mobility. A couple considerations are obviously your injury last year. Yeah. Um, what, how, how much have you been working out since that time? Um, well, I started working out in like July. Lots of work on the rower. Yep. Um, cardio and not a ton of strength because I wasn't, you know, able to. I was kind of sore. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. You know, I hurt my back, and then now I got ribs, and so I was trying to lift the other day at the gym, and I was just like pop, 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 so I gave up, and then. So we don't know what's going on with these because you're, you're tough as shit, and you decide not to get an X-ray. Yeah. But we think you got broken ribs, right? Uh, whatever. There's nothing you can do for them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And the other consideration is you're racing on Sunday. Yeah. So we're not going. No need to. No, do there's a no need to beat me up. No need to do a wad, beat you up, and yeah. blow you out of the water. So all this stuff, though, just like Greg probably coached you when you're doing all the weightlifting stuff. Think about that core stability. So like if. if uh, if you think about how your spine is in alignment right now, yeah. that's how you want to keep it throughout all these stretches. Okay. So pretty basic stuff though, and actually uh, let's just face this way and we'll walk in a line. Okay. And all these stuff is for quality movement, not for, there's no racing aspect to this. Yeah. Okay. So first one, we'll just do walking lunges, but I want you to first pull your hip wide open. Okay. And then when you fall into this, think about, you'll think about like a split snatch yeah. or, or a split jerk rather, but I want you to fall nice and tight here. I want your knee to stay directly over your ankle, so don't, don't come too far in front of your toe. Good, and then fire that back glute. So just fall out of the lunge. Good, yeah, and I don't want to, so I just don't want your knee to travel too far back. Okay, and I want you to fire your back glute so this knee is straight. So in other words, straighten your back leg. Okay, good, and then sink down from the hips. So that's the weapon lined up. And the hip flexor, the fire that back glute, nice and tall in the chest. There you go, and then sink way down. How's that feel? Stretching. Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> And move on whenever you're ready, you know, like feel the stretch, come on, come back out, yeah, neutral, no other one, pull it open. Okay. It's not a race, it's not mountain climbers, just bring this foot up outside this hand. And again, you want to keep your chest up nice and tall and sink your hips down. There you go. There you go, hold it for maybe like a three count or so, and we'll switch. And again, it's not like a jumping mountain climb, it's just put that foot back and replace it on the other side. Enjoy oh, that. that fizzy water. Yeah, enjoy that. Just find a good squat position or with your feet and then just sink down into it. Like we did yesterday, you can relax at first, but try and get your elbows directly on the insides of your knees. You can be like prayer position with your hands. Yeah. You want to be. This is like, this is like what I do. This is what you do? Nice, yeah, okay. This is how I stretch my groin. Okay, good. You push down and back. So literally trying to force your hamstrings to lengthen. Come back down so your head goes up, butt goes down. Yeah, and on the way down, you want to really just Push back, you feel pretty painful. No, 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 no. Yeah. So butt up, head down. <laughs> Switch it. Let's assume like a little bit wider than you would be in your squat stance. And we're gonna go side to side. So when you get down here, you, you can relax on the front of your toe, but when you're gonna switch back, I want you to engage so you're back onto your heel and then stay at this height. So there's like a, a, a burning log above you. I want you to stay as low as you can. You should feel some snap, crackle, pop in your, uh, in your hips if you're doing it right. And you can kind of relax down there again. Hands go to the ground and you walk your feet out all the way as far as you can. So if you can kiss the ground, great. And then walk your hands in. So it's just kind of an inchworm. <laughs> Don't walk it out so far. Yeah, yeah, walk them all the way into your feet. So, so feet, like yeah, yep, yeah. and so feet go out just a little at a time. And then walk the hands in. Go out into that deep lunge, fire that back glute, sink the hips down. So maybe sneak that back foot back a little bit. There you go, and fire that back leg so it's straight. So you guys are gonna bring your left arm down inside, keep your chest up, but bring your chest down as far as you can. It's <laughs> all right, so leave your right hand on the ground. Okay, everything stays the same, but you're looking up towards the sky. Right hand on the ground? Uh, yep, leave your right hand on the ground. Twist up, there you go. Okay, now both hands down on the outside of your foot. So right, left hand here, right hand there, and straighten this standing leg as best you can. If your toe comes up, that's fine. So literally, it's gonna go like this. Feel that deep hamstring stretch. Okay. 
if your chest only comes down to here on this portion, that's fine, but don't, don't cheat it by rounding out your back. So go for quality of movement. So right leg's next. Suck it up. Stay nice and tight as you drop out. Nice, dude. Good. Fire that back glute. Hips sink down. You got it already. So keeping a nice tight core, you're going to sink that chest down as close as you can get it to the ground. There you go. Left hand stays on the ground. Right hand goes up towards the sky. Look up at your right hand if you can. Okay, okay. Yeah, if it's hurting your ribs, don't do it. Both hands back to the ground. Straighten that standing leg. You feel a deep hamstring stretch. You're basically just going to press back. So this is kind of like downward dog yoga, but we're keeping it active. So you're just pressing back enough to open up your shoulder girdle. Feel that stretch down the back of your hamstrings and then return to here. Okay, so actually go a little bit wider with your feet. There you go. And push way back. So you're pushing hard into your shoulders. Push into the ground. Okay. There you go. And then also push down through your heels. So it should feel a pretty deep hamstring stretch. Try and glue those heels to the ground if you can. Um, so I want both legs at 45 degree angles. And with the one that's, that you're sitting with, or the one that's coming up, you can pretend like you're pinching a tennis ball or something, right? But I basically need it to stay there. If you want to hold on to it underneath, that's fine, or hands can stay on the hips. But what we're doing is the, the standing heel stays up. There you go, so flex that standing heel up. Maybe a little bit more bend in your bottom knee. There you go. And all we're doing is literally trying to raise your hips to the sky. Okay, ready, lift the hips. So head down towards, there you go, and knees come as high as you can. So you're basically squeezing your ass cheeks. Higher Eric, higher Eric for about five, four, three, two, one. Hand straight out in front of you like a zombie, and then bring your legs straight up. So we're not doing, and just keep them so your lower back's on the ground. So we're not doing flutter kicks here, but one at a time. Arms are staying where they're at. You're gonna send one foot down slowly to the ground, bring it back up, and then the other one's gonna go down. It's nice and slower than that. Now the whole time, in theory, his core should be so tight that I can punch him, right? Which it is. So he's doing a great job, but I, want you guys, but I want you guys for a minute, we're going to go for quality of movement, and that's all you're doing is switching legs, okay? Staying nice and tight in your core. So focus on keeping that nice and tight. Then bring it back up. So literally, they're just going to alternate. Like this oh, one, go, yeah. this one goes down, yeah. Yeah. comes up. This one goes down, comes up. Yeah, and just let it kiss the ground and bring it right back up. As soon as it kisses the ground, bring it right back up. Keep your nice plank position, so I'm not trying to compromise that to make a to give myself more room. What I want to do is come across, keep this leg straight, end off the ground, and get it as close and as slow to this hand as I possibly can. So it's not <laughs> kicking, right? Flip it over, keep it off the ground, try and bring it nice and close to that hand. That's impressive. And then switch. <laughs> Quality of movement, not speed. Same leg, just keep going. No, no, sorry, switch back and forth. Don't race, guys. Challenge to see how slow you can go. Almost there, about 15 more seconds. Keep that knee as straight as you possibly can. Keep that toe as flexed as you possibly can. This is uncrossfit right now. We're not going for time. Leg comes up, so it's, it, we keep it active, but straight leg comes up, toe flex towards your face. Just let gravity pull it over. Keep your shoulders and, uh, and your neck facing one way, and then bring it right back up and relax. That's one. So number two would look like that, right, and three. So we keep it, keep it active, keep moving, and uh, Let's just do, let's do 10. This is way better than, <laughs> what I, like I'm so sick of my normal like routine. It's just so hard to like figure out new things to do, you just get stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm.